it's just my honor to introduce you, Karen. This is uh, Karen Korematsu, the daughter of Fred Korematsu. Um, and we've just, just this last weekend, uh, observed the, the day of remembrance, the, the day to remember, the weekend to remember, the month to remember, and really the decade after decade after decade to remember uh, what took place in this great country um, and how a, another group of individuals, those being Japanese and Japanese descent, uh, faced their moment of standing for their rights and pursuing justice for their community. And so, Karen, if you could please just walk us through some of that history and walk us through how the Asian Law Caucus was uh, first created and the kind of great work that's come out of the Asian Law Caucus. And then, of course, now currently as the co-founder of the Korematsu Institute, um, what that would mean not only for the rights of Japanese Americans ongoingly, but truly the rights of all of those immigrant groups similar to the Iranian American community that um, are finding themselves in moments of heat and discrimination. And thank you for being here. It's a real pleasure to, um, to be with you this afternoon, and thank you, Bonacha, for inviting me and for um, creating PARS. Uh, I think this is so important for, especially for uh, the Iranian-American um, community, but for all Americans. Uh, we share similar stories, and uh, that's why we're, we're here to get today. And I am, I'm so touched that, that uh, you know, you are, also carrying on um, my father's legacy and his spirit. Mm -hmm. So, because education is, is all important. Uh, the Asian Law Caucus, just to give you a, a brief history, uh, is uh, about 39 years old, and it is the uh, oldest uh, nonprofit uh, legal and uh, civil rights uh, Asian American organization in the United States. And certainly over the years, we've uh, championed uh, those uh, different uh, uh, communities that have uh, been challenged with discrimination. And so civil rights is, is uh, the work that we do. We uh, also work in employment uh, and housing uh, and immigration. And, and that's a little uh, kind of story behind the, the Asian Law Caucus. It was also part of my father's uh, Quorum Nobis legal team when my father's uh, Supreme Court case was opened in 1982. And our family always wanted to find a way to give back to this organization. And so that's uh, why I uh, co-founded the Fred Korematsu Institute for Civil Rights and Education as a program of the Asian, Asian Law Caucus to further my father's mission of, of education. The parallels uh, be between you know 1942 and and now um, are 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 sadly uh, you know part of our history. Uh, in in 1942, uh, after Pearl Harbor, and war was declared on Japan, President Roosevelt uh, issued Executive Order 9066, which gave the military the authorization to force remove. Uh, anyone of Japanese ancestry, including um, Japanese Americans from the West Coast, and put them in concentration camps throughout the United States. This was done without any uh, uh, hearing, any trial, or any due process. And so there, the civil rights of, of uh, Japanese and Japanese Americans were certainly violated at the time and, and were proved to be unconstitutional. Uh, just to give you a little bit more history, um, especially since we have Abdi here with us, uh, because uh, it was Mr. Ernest Bessick, who was then the um, uh, direct executive director of the Northern California affiliate of the ACLU, who went to my father in 1942 in jail and wanted to ask him if he would be a test case, because he knew that uh, this was unconstitutional, what was happening to the Japanese Americans. And, and he did also, uh, he, he pursued this, um, uh, quite frankly, under uh, stress 
um, and from the national affiliate. Uh, they were, a lot of them were friends of Roosevelt, and they didn't want him to take on my father's case. And they actually threatened him with, with ouster from the organization. But he, uh, he just stood his ground, and the board of directors was also uh, behind him. And so, you know, unfortunately, uh, my father's case, uh, it did go to the Supreme Court, uh, and in 1942, they did uh, find him, uh, my father, guilty of, of violating these uh, military orders. And it wasn't until 1982 when a professor uh, was doing research in Washington, D.C., uh, when he and a another researcher found the evidence uh, that there was no military necessity for the Japanese Americans to be forced removed from their homes. And on that technicality, my father's case was uh, reopened, and uh, his conviction was vacated. However, the Supreme Court record still stands because it did not go all the way up to uh, appeal all the way up to the to the Supreme Court. Uh, the, only the Supreme Court can actually overturn themselves, and so it stands um, still as a caution to all Americans and to our civil rights. Uh, that in times of military, of, of you know, uh, national stress, that uh, this can be used to round up another group of uh, Americans of any other ethnic background. And so that's a caution to uh, us all and why we continue to speak out and to educate. Uh, unfortunately, th the... Um, as I said, the parallels are, are very similar uh, from what's happening today, especially, you know, with the Iranian Americans, uh, you know, saying that they're disloyal. Well, that was like saying that the Japanese Americans were disloyal uh, just for, for what happened after 9-11. It, un unfortunately, uh, you know, th the Iranian um, American community is a, was a bit, is a bit like what the Japanese American community was. They didn't like to make, they don't want to make waves. They, they don't, you know, they, they're, they feel like if they're going to prove they're good Americans, that they should just go along and, and, um, and not ca cause any problems. And now, you know, Iranian Americans have the power, you have the power to stand up for your rights. That's, that's the difference from what was happening in 1942. You know, we need to treat each other with dignity, to respect our differences, and uh, appreciate all that we contribute coming from different, or, you know, our ancestries coming from different um, countries. The, um, we need to uh, continue our partnerships, and I'm, I'm so thankful that uh, Banasha is, is, you know, has partnered with um, other organizations, ACLU, and uh, um, Asian Law Caucus and like-minded organizations because it gives the power to everyone to be able to stand up for, th for their rights. And also I'd like to uh, encourage um, people to be Im involved in, in civics in your community. You know, one reason um, in 1988 uh, the um, President uh, Reagan signed the um, the apology to Japanese Americans for the incarceration, for redress and reparations. And, and it was because there were Japanese Americans that were in uh, Congress at the time that could tell their stories of being incarcerated as children to their fellow colleagues. And so we all, from coming from different ethnic backgrounds, need to be part of our civics and community so that when we do, you know, have these situations that we can all be represented. Uh, you know, we're all peace-loving people, and I think we need to remember that uh, first. You know, the ter terrorists have no country. I mean, it, it's, it's just what they, what they do. And a few have made it difficult uh, for many, and, and discrimination, unfortunately, uh, has become racial profiling. And we need to be um, mindful of not letting that uh, happen. Uh, you know, I've heard about, ch you know, as 
um, I think Abdi was saying, um, children that were being uh, targeted in, in school, uh, you know, and, and calling names. I remember that as a child, um, this is in the early 50s, so it was soon after, you know, Pearl Harbor. I was blamed for being, for Pearl Harbor. It's, it was a terrible experience. I was called names. Uh, racial slur names, and um, unfortunately, I never said anything to my parents. I just kept it to myself because I was so ashamed. And we need to encourage our children to speak up. So talk to your children and, and tell them that they have the power. Ask them what's happening in school. And the, ir the irony of it all was my, fa my brother, who is four years younger, experienced the same type of treatment. And, to th and both of us ended up not being able to e even ride the school bus. But we, didn't, we made up excuses to my mother, you know, why we couldn't ride the school bus. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's not right. You know, we, we need to remind, you know, children and the elderly that they do have rights. Uh, you know, even in when my father was um, came back to the Bay Area after the war, he uh, experienced employment discrimination. People didn't want to hire him just because he was, he, you know, Japanese. And he always said, "Well, you know, I'm an American." I mean, he thought of himself as an American. And so, what this is is this is an American story that we all need to remember and to, and to pass on. And when people are having, you know, when you see something in, this, in the street, to, to do as my father did, to stand up for what is right. You have that power. You are protected by the Constitution. There is nothing wrong with our Constitution. I hear this discussion of, oh, we should change the Constitution. There is nothing wrong with the Constitution. Uh, it's as solid as it, as it was when it was created and, and now. It's the people that want to try to interpret it or to try to change it. And these are the want people that when they say something, we, we, they need to be accountable. We need to make them accountable. So we have all these opportunities. And uh, as, um, you know, when you're, when you're out there finding it difficult. Be empowered by my father's words. Protest, but not with violence. Otherwise, no one will listen to you. But don't be afraid to speak up. Thank you. <laughs>